Machiavelli the die till I'm gone. He was saying this shit while he was alive. He was telling us. We was every we were talking about you. Nigga, I'm a legend. I'm putting in mine. You better put in yours, cause I'm a legend already. Be a history, a legend, you defy me. Tell Machiavelli be uh, Jose Quinto. Yeah, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> it's really his project, but he let me ride when I'm on this minority exchange program. Songwriter files death row suit. Music producer songwriter Johnny Lee Jackson has filed a lawsuit against Death Row Records and Interscope Records for allegedly failing to pay him for 11 songs he produced and co-wrote on the Tupac Shakur album, All Eyes on Me. In a complaint filed Thursday in LA Superior Court, Jackson, professionally known as Johnny J, claimed that Death Row President Marion Shug Knight promised to pay him a $10,000 advance per song he produced for the album against a royalty of 3%. Released in February, the album has sold more than 7 million copies, and a single Jackson co-wrote has sold more than 2 million copies and was nominated for a Grammy Award. But Jackson claims he has not been paid despite repeated demands. Jackson is among a growing list of predators seeking payments from the rap music powerhouse while its CEO is in prison. Knight currently is at the Chino Men's Colony undergoing a diagnostic review while awaiting sentencing next month on probation violation charges. Death Row has a pattern and practice of failing to pay artists in accordance with the terms of their agreements, the lawsuit states. The complaint also asserts that the label uses various strong-arm tactics, including threats of and actual physical violence, to convince artists to perform and to waive their rights. The lawsuit seeks unspecified compensatory and punitive damages. Death Row execs declined to comment about the complaint. Johnny J was murdered for his Tupac catalog. Woo! Explain first of all. Explain what he's talking about. So I, I I don't know. And does he own? Did he own some Tupac material or something? He didn't own Tupac material, but Johnny J had just sued. If I'm mistaken, he he had sued uh, Death Row get all this publishing rights and his uh credit right writers he just got a big check and uh but Danny J like driving he liked driving drunk okay and uh he had bought him a house out in Palmdale or Lancaster or something like that he was doing real well married a fine sister and um rumor has it he he got he got into an issue with some folks in jail because he was working with, the, with, with some brothers and you know maybe I think some other folks were trying to tax him that's what I heard. I don't know nothing about that. I wasn't in jail. I, that rumor has it he was he was he was coming home. Only had a few days left, and he got to some folks. Some folks were trying to tax him, and next thing you know, they he you know ended up on the second on the bottom floor of a two story uh, tier. Yo, YouTube, what up? Show me Gavin in the building, and this is Machiavelli Media. With no further ado. I got Reggie Wright Jr. on the line. Reg, what up? What up, Gabo? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, big bro. Hey, let's get into um, Johnny J, man. I, how good did you know Johnny J in the first place? Okay, well, Johnny J, I didn't know him until he came around. He came around about, mm, Park came home, uh, or to death row, well, and, and to his new home. Uh, I think it was like October, uh, sometime in October of uh, 1995. Johnny J walked in the studio probably less than a week uh, after that and was there for most of Park's uh, time on Death Row. A lot of people think it was longer because of the way the albums came out and stuff, but Park was only with Death Row from the end of October until... He died on um, September the 13th. Uh, Johnny Jay left probably about June, sometime in June of uh, 1996. And so, right, right, right. You asked the question was how well did I know him? So I probably, uh, Johnny Jay was a hard worker for Pac. Uh, at least five times a week uh, from that time from that, you know, those months, within those 10, 10 to 11 months um, while on death row. Wow, that's pretty deep, man. Um, 
What kind of relationship did you witness between Tupac and Johnny J? Were they really tight, or was it just a you know a business relationship? Um, no, they appeared to be uh, solid. Uh, you know, they had a working relationship. Johnny J was the type of guy that came in with a bunch of equipment. He always had his girl with him, Cap Cappuccino. Uh, she was always with him, and um, he so that meant he was into. His one female, his wife, and, um, you know, he was a, uh, I don't know if y'all know, he was either biracial or all Mexican. I don't know, but he was a good looking, uh, handsome man and, uh, had a beautiful wife. And they appeared to be, uh, 100 Puck and, and, um, Johnny's relationship. Wouldn't call him no best friend. I don't remember him hanging out, uh, on a club or restaurants or anything like that. But as far as my number one producer, yeah, nobody can take that away from Johnny J. Right, no doubt about it. You know, Johnny J gave Tupac uh, 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 a hell of a sound. They actually gelled quite magically together. Um, such classics like Pour Out a Little Liquor and How Do You Want It, just two mega tracks that came to mind, that comes to mind, actually. Um I heard Johnny J say in an interview right before his death that he had several unreleased Tupac recordings that a lot of labels were interested in. Did you know anything about these unreleased recordings that he made with Tupac? Yeah, those would have to be pre-death row because I only know of Johnny J and Tupac working away or, or Tupac going out to Johnny J house. And that was on one occasion. They lived out in the Lancaster Palmdale area, as I remember. It was kind of far away from the studio. And I do remember my security telling me that they went out to Johnny J House. But I think that was for like a gathering or something like that. Um, I'm not saying they don't have a studio at his house because I don't know. I'm pretty sure right. they did. But uh, I believe the, the unreleased songs on pop, matter of fact, I know they were was prior to death row and it could be a lot the only mm-hmm. knock that i have on johnny j is that i know puck used johnny j mainly and that's why most of his songs and most of the songs that y'all heard on the bootlegs and stuff like that were all over sample music uh, for those of y'all don't know what sample music is that's beast that's already been out and he was basically uh, a beat maker just trying to lay tracks down for Pac to practice his lyrics on to see how they come off. And then he was going to go back and need to get another producer to uh, do those songs or Johnny J was going to do something. If it was hot with that sample and we can get it cleared or do something without the, uh, without the sample clearance with either Johnny J or, or another producer. But that's why... Johnny J has so many songs, and pretty much all the songs y'all hear uh, with Johnny J and Pac that didn't come out commercially, and even some that did, but the ones that didn't come out commercially all had samples in them. Right. Yeah. So okay, so when uh, let me get let me get my times right here. So at the Tupac pass, and Johnny J worked on. Are you still down? And, you know, a lot of the the albums that came out after Tupac's death, did he have any type of, you know, legal matters with death row that had to be resolved in court? I hear people speak about that. Was there any truth to that? Yes. Johnny, they did file a lawsuit. I'll send it to you. You can pin it up in your section, uh, over your comment section if you want. Um, I got the uh, the lawsuit, the paperwork on it. And there's also a, a nice uh, interview or a uh, a statement from Tupac's attorney uh, that was handling the, the transactions and stuff like that. Still to this day, a female by the name of Dina Lapote, where she, Johnny J. Whitecap was uh, doing a uh, a, um, a documentary on, where she got Cap to uh, to speak about where she was pretty much complimenting. 
Johnny J for taking care of his paperwork and, and being on top of his game and, and following the lawsuit and getting his money and getting his just due uh, to what's owed him and his rights, where even if any of those songs that had samples in it came out, Johnny J was still going to get credit as the original person with the vocals, you know, that was on his beats. Even if we changed the uh, the beats, the, took the samples out and everything, where Johnny J is still getting credit for those particular songs. So she complimented him on that. I think that was agreement that was done between them because that's who ultimately has to pay uh, producers on their albums is the artist. Yeah. So, right. yes, right. to answer your question. Okay. How do you feel when you hear people say things like Johnny J lost his life, you know, um, because of his, you know, discrepancies with Death Row Records? Like, do you ever want to put those rumors to bed? Anything you want to say to the whole situation about Johnny J's death? Yeah, I didn't really hear about those until I started coming around this YouTube community. And so I know that's a lot of little kids and stuff like that that's out there that like to type stuff. And usually be the same trolls that's, that's typing the same stuff over and over under the same accounts. Um, but hey, there's investigation oversights out here. People want to say, no, Johnny J didn't commit suicide in the county jail. Uh, he was murdered by the sheriff's department or somebody that Reggie right now or something like that. Man, thank y'all. Y'all make a nigga think that he's the baddest dude around. <laughs> um, I mean, but if I believe half the hype that y'all try to give law enforcement. But, you know, I understand why the little kids think that way. Because I'll be watching all these TV shows now, and in every TV show, there's a dirty cop. There's always a dirty cop in every TV show that we all like and, and like now. So I understand why people think there's a lot of dirty cops out there. But I'm telling y'all, man, the United States government investigations and cops don't trust each other like that. You got oversights, you got uh, internal affairs, you got FBI agents and all of that. They are not all one just like y'all think. Just like in the games. Everybody's not all one. They got people that are or will snitch on you in a minute in their game and stuff. And so, man, right. it's crazy, but it's there. But unfortunately, Johnny J, just like Biggie's mom did, if she felt like there was some foul play in there, this woman loves Johnny J, y'all. This girl, Cappuccino, was the type of girl that walked around the studio and Johnny J was very comfortable with allowing her to do it, it's obvious. But she walked around where niggas be looking at her like, whoa, you know, with her, with like a, 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 a bathing suit on or something like that on the top. She was a very good looking and, I forget the word, per, per, promiscuous or something like that, um, uh -huh. dressing type young lady, very attractive, and she was black, a black girl. But this lady now, from the death of Johnny J, she walks around with a Bible. She probably got a Bible in her hand right now with a, a dress down to her ankles. I mean, it just messed her up. My point being, right. if she felt there was some type of foul play or wasn't proven that there was some type of foul play, she's the type of woman that would be jumping up and down We'll be suing everybody, just like Biggie Mouse did, until what? She found out the truth with her attorneys and her lawsuits and been like, okay, yeah, there ain't no truth to this. And you know what she said on The Breakfast Club and what Miss Wallace say now? What's that? The findings of murder rap, I believe, is 90% accurate. So all the conspiracies that... Other people were putting out there. It's just people that had nothing to do with these people life. I'm talking about Biggie and Pop and now Johnny J's life that just want to have something to talk about, to put stuff out. 
and uh, our conspirators. And um, that's all people are. And, it, and we're going to have them among us. But it's all about the masses, bro. Right. But go ahead, Dan. Right. So my, now my question was, now, you know, I don't understand. What, so what jail was he in, Reg? Like, I'm sure it was cameras there. Like, if it was some foul play, you know, it's got to be camera footage. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a prison, right? It's a county jail, a county jail in Los Angeles. Like I'm trying to explain to the people, Gabo. Only reason I even put this lady business out there, because I'm just trying to show you, she is not the type of lady that's gonna just lay down and not take, take, and just take anything that anybody tell her. She is a fighter. She loves Johnny J. If there was anything out there, any type of foul play, and she felt there was some foul play, she would be the biggest one jumping up and down, complaining, and did like Miss Wallace did, and make people investigate it and come to her and, and tell her something to convince her otherwise. Right. Last question. So what exactly was he arrested for in the first place? Like, you know, was he facing some, like, real, what was he detained for in the first place? DUI. DUI. But we don't know what his mental stage was because we hadn't heard from Johnny J in a while prior to that happening. When I say we, I'm talking about death row. I'm talking about the music or hip-hop community. And so we don't know where his his headspace was. And people commit suicide all the time in, uh, in our community that we would be like, dang, Junior Seha, one of my favorite football players, committed suicide. Why? This man had everything. All the money, loving family. Why do people do that? We don't right. know, man. Depression. Depression is a mother, man. 